All right, welcome back, everybody, live on Radio Row in Atlanta. It is the Sports Bash, 97.3 ESPN, getting ready for Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, we will not be uh, at the game. We're getting out of here tomorrow. But Ed Werder will be there on the sidelines with Westwood 1. And uh, this is a, I feel, Ed, a very interesting matchup. And I'm sure uh, you've been finding out some pretty interesting things about these teams as we get ready for Super Sunday. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you guys having me on. I uh, make an annual visit to uh, Atlantic City through uh, Ron Jaworski, a former colleague of mine at ESPN. Is great charity golf event that he has had up there i've probably been five or six years in a row so I'm yet to win and i'm determined to keep going until i do how do you hit them blackjack <laughs> on, <laughs> on 16 i hit them uh i, I play pretty good most yeah. of the time yeah i mean we all miss shots and putts but yeah i'm uh so i don't you can handle yourself scott's yeah, I mean, really good Oh, I, really no, you're, no, 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 no. Well, we won't play him for money. Then. No, 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 no. That's He's selling me. He's really overselling me. Well, I'm really bad, so everybody's good. Well, I, sh I shoot like mid-80s usually. All right. Well, so. that's really good. Okay. Well, good. I guess, <laughs> I, I guess I'm really good also. Uh, and both these teams are really good. One being, let's start with the Patriots, who are always good, seemingly yep. always good. And uh, I guess, you know, you look at this team, not much should be different about them in the previous you know, times that they've been here. They probably have, uh, this is old hat for them. Well, and the interesting thing to me about that is it just seems like New England's come into this game making, like, no assumptions based on, we don't get to watch practice, uh, but based on the way it's been characterized by the coaches, both Bel Belichick in, in, pro in public and, and others I've talked to, you know, they talked about the Rams being a very complicated team to prepare for because of all the different looks that they give you. And... You know, Belichick has mentioned that, they, hey, they're an explosive team in all three phases. They can score when they don't have the ball. Right. You know, and they can score on special teams. They've done it. Um, so that's required a lot of extra work, he has said, from his players who have been willing to give him what he wants in that regard. And so maybe it was the fact that as many times as they have been to this game and all the experience they have, that their last experience was a bad one. Yeah. And... They haven't forgotten. Nobody has to tell them what it feels like to lose a Super Bowl. There's about 35 guys on this team who know what it feels like because they experienced it last year. Well, Scott's been following the Rams for most of the week here, and he follows the Eagles all year long. And it seems that the media attention that the Rams are getting for a team that hasn't been to the Super Bowl in quite some time is a lot less than what the Eagles were receiving last year, which I guess should allow them to kind of focus more on this game rather than get caught up in it. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about the Rams is, um, especially from the perspective of the quarterback, you know, he's a young player. This is the biggest game of his career, so you never know how he's going to handle it. But I'm going to say this about Jared Goff. Um, he not only resurrected, you know, his career early on, because a lot of people thought he was a failed number one overall pick when he was 0-7 under Jeff Fisher. And to be a part of a Rams team that's been first and second in scoring the last two seasons and to get to a Super Bowl earlier than any number one overall quarterback ever is, is quite an achievement. And how will he handle the game? I don't know, mm. but I do know this. I was on the sidelines at the NFC Championship game, and they had to be concerned about what the noise was going to do to their communications because it's probably more important to the Rams than it is most teams because one of the great advantages they try to create for themselves is in the right environments, uh, McVeigh will have Goff rush to the line of scrimmage like they're running no huddle up tempo and he'll stand there and they force the defense which doesn't know when the ball is going to be snapped to declare what they're going to play and then McVeigh before the 15 second communication and the headsets cut off calls a play against a known defense. Now, so given that as a background, huh. they're in New Orleans and his headset's not working. Right. And he's trying, I'm watching him, he's trying on three different helmets. No, doesn't work, this one doesn't work. He has to take the backup quarterback, Sean Mannion's helmet out for the first series. Throws a ball to Gurley, that's a well-thrown ball that gets picked and sets up New Orleans for easy points. And the whole time he was very stoic about it. I couldn't, I, I had a hard time imagining a young player would be so wow. apparently nonplussed by it. We, and, and given his ability to not only overcome that adversity, but being down 13 to nothing in that game, uh, I give the guy a lot of credit. It, you, you know, you're talking about the helmet issue. It, it's funny because talking to Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks this week, 
those guys talked about that and didn't even know that was going on until after the game when they heard about it. Um, so that just goes to the poise you're talking about yeah. from, from, from Goff. He wasn't making excuses about it. And Wood said, he's like, you know, the regular fan doesn't understand. You go grab a helmet that's not yours, it doesn't fit right. You know, it's not the same thing. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the poise. And, he's, Jared and, and more importantly, he's not hearing the play from the head coach like he like right. he has all year long. You know, he's getting it in signals, and he's got to communicate it to his teammates in a very loud environment. Then he's got to make adjustments at the line of scrimmage, and so the start of the whole process is skewed. And like you said, he handled it with great composure. Well, like Mike said, I was with uh, you know I, I've been covering the Eagles the last few years. I've been around the team a lot. I remember last year in Minneapolis being around them, um, and I felt as I've been around the Rams this week that they are not you know, getting too big in the moment. The moment hasn't consumed them. They've kind of stayed level-headed, a lot like the Eagles did last year. Have you gotten that same sense that the Rams are, you know, not letting the moment define them, that they're ready to go out here on Sunday and be a team that could beat the Patriots? Well, that's certainly the way um, that McVay has described his team's mentality. And they do have some veteran players on the team, and they have they have a veteran defensive coordinator who's 71 years old and has been in the NFL for 43 years you know, making the defensive game plan against Tom Brady. So I think that and some of the, the veteran defensive players that they have, you know, helps them uh, not feel overwhelmed in a situation like this. But you just never know until they, they go to the field. Like, I'm not sure when I was covering those Super Bowls of the Dallas Dynasty and went to all the Buffalo Bills press conferences that I ever got a sense they were going to go out and get destroyed like they did or, or that the Broncos were going to lose 55-10 yeah. to 10 to, the, to the 49er machine. So I think it's really hard to tell. Probably get a better sense, you know, when when you get on the field and, and see how they're reacting in terms of pregame. This part of it's pretty easy to fool people, I think. Uh, Edward or Westwood one will be on the sidelines for the game. We'll have it on 97.3 ESPN. He also uh, does the Doomsday Pod, and you covered the Cowboys a lot in your career. I'll just leave you with the NFC East right now. It looked like the Eagles after a Super Bowl were the clear favorites in I that division, them. right? <laughs> but that division seems to be a jumbled mess again. I think the Eagles Eagles still showed you something, I think, at the end of the year with the way they rebounded. And and the Cowboys didn't have a successful season by the standards that most hold the Cowboys to in Dallas, given all the you know historic success they've had winning Super Bowls. It's been a long time. Um, but they did come back from 3-5 and five start, and they did win the division, and they did win a playoff game. Uh, but Jason Garrett's job is on the line this season, and that'll be an interesting influence in, in how the next one plays out. You know, the Eagle fans don't want him to go. I know. <laughs> I don't think the Redskins fans or the Giants fans do either. And you know what? Jerry doesn't want him to go. Uh, Ed Werner, you'll uh, hear his reporting on Sunday on Westwood One right here on 97.3 ESPN. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed All it. I right, appreciate it. We'll be back with plenty more here in Atlanta from Super Bowl 53 on Radio Row on 97.3 ESPN.